Venom, you're so incorrigible. Oh, I didn't see you come in. Welcome back, Minties. Join me, won't you, as we take an advanced look at Venom Epic Collections Volume 1 Symbiosis. Thank you to the folks at Marvel and David Gabriel for this advanced copy. Volume 1 comes out November the 4th, and before, I know everyone's been excited for this. So before we get started, um, let's take a look at what is collected in this epic. We have Amazing Spider-Man 258. 300, 315 through 317, 332 through 333, 346 through 347, 388, B-Story, Web of Spider-Man number one, De uh, Avengers, Death Trap, The Vault, <laughs> Dark Hawk 13 through 14, material from Amazing Spider-Man Annual 25 and 26, Web of Spider-Man Annual 7 through 8, Spectacular Spider-Man Annual 12. <gasps> <clears throat> The collection starts with the famous introduction of Spider-Man in his black suit in Secret Wars number 8. And then goes on to Mary Jane revealing she knows Peter's secret in Amazing 258. Drama ensues as the black cat interrupts her conversation and by just jumping in the window. And he also discovers, oh, his suit's alive. Many an excerpt continues the tale. And Peter finally rids himself of the symbiote in Web of Spider-Man number one by allowing the torture of the church bell to force the alien to detach. In Amazing 300, love this issue, Eddie is revealed to be Venom. Dun, dun, dun. During a knockout brawl, Venom regales Spider-Man with his backstory. So we got how Brock published this story about the identity of the Sin Eater and it ended up being incorrect. Our amazing neighborhood Spider-Man brought the real murderer to justice, thereby sending Brock into like a spiral of discreditation and self-pity and destruction. You know, all the good stuff for the making of a villain. After Parker rid himself of the symbiote, it immediately discovered Brock as he was contemplating suicide, and they both find solace in the other in terms of Spider-Man's apparent betrayal. At the conclusion of the battle, Venom webs up the hero inside of the same church bell that Parker had used to get the uh, symbiote off of him, and that's some poetic justice right there. Yeah. Finally, we see the beginning of Venom's interesting word choices, his juxtaposition of like elegant phrases and crude and vulgar phrases. Allow me to share what he says as he's got Spidey wrapped up in the bell and he's got like this priest robe on. Apropos sentiments considering the circumstances, just as my altar garb is appropriate, after all, we are in a manner of speaking, exercising a demon. And then it's followed by, but you'll be gut jammed by the time the bell strikes two. And you know, later there's the the famous I'll eat your brains lines that's very classic. Now, avid reader, I ask you, why? Why were the good people forced to wait 15 issues for Venom's return? In Amazing 315 through 317, David Michelini sets up Brock's character as cunning, as well as owning a sense of duty to protect the innocent as long as they're not interfering with his righteous mission to kill Peter Parker. This later sets him apart from his inferior counterpart, Carnage, at least in my opinion, who's only bent on violence without any sense of propriety. Lastly, the tension while Peter and Eddie are in their civvies are a great addition to the story. Now, Venom spends some hard time in the supervillain prison known as The Vault in the Avengers Death Trap, The Vault. He's scheming, he's killing hostages, and he's fighting the Avengers and the Freedom Force who's been called in. So it's a really big mix of this great cast of villains who work as heroes, and then they're villains and make deals with heroes, flip and flop, um, and all this to defuse a bomb that's not only going to blow up the whole vault, but half the state as well. Venom doesn't appreciate Thunderball taking the lead, though, but later he exacts his revenge on Truman, the Warden. We have a good old-fashioned superhero story with multiple villains in Amazing 332 through 333. Mr. Caesar hires Sticks and Stone to kill the wall crawler, and Venom just coincidentally happens to be on the prowl trying to do the same thing. So, Sticks attacks Venom, though, in this, um, foursome? And the alien gives its life to protect Eddie from uh, Stick's deadly withering touch. Finally, we witness Peter's genuine goodness um, in this story when he regrets not reaching Venom in time to save him and he's quietly standing to the side while Eddie's mourning the loss of his other half. Just, he's a great guy. So our favorite dark web slinger finds himself sharing a jail cell with Cletus Cassidy, aka Carnage. Cassidy taunts Brock with his psychopathic ideologies until 
uh, the symbiote comes and frees Brock, but it leaves a piece of itself stuck on the windowsill for Cassidy to employ later. Yay. My good mentees, indulge me for a moment, if you will. As I digress, are you familiar with the Freudian theory of superego, ego, and id? Id is your base subconscious desires, superego is like your sense of morality, and ego is the happy medium between the two. Peter serves as the ego, Venom is the superego, and Carnage is the id. I'll concede, perhaps not, but consider this. Carnage works off of base selfish desires, and Venom's the opposite, he thinks he is righteous, Albeit that his morality isn't in touch with reality, but such is the case sometimes with superego. With Peter being the good balance of morality and, you know, using violence to save others and defend himself. Digression over. Amazing 346 to 347 chronicles Venom's return, and we are treated with a lovely literary illusion on the cover 347 with Venom invoking Hamlet. Classic. The pair have a tussle on a deserted island because Venom wants to savor his kill uninterrupted. And Larson's beautiful pencils bring the life into the action. You got tendrils flailing about. And then Spider-Man deceives Venom into thinking he's uh, succeeded in killing him. He finds a skeleton, puts a tattered costume on it, sets an explosion, boom, he's dead. And he sails away into the distance with Venom happy staying on the island. I think this is one of my top 10 favorite Spider-Man stories. After an appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 25, where we are again exposed to Venom's sense of justice as he fights a gang of ne'er-do-wells, he clashes with Dark Hawk in issues 13 and 14 of the self-titled book. Dark Hawk is wounded and tries to find answers to save himself and his family, but finds himself crash landing on Venom's Island. And so the two battle until Venom senses Dark Hawk's innocence and he feigns his death. I think Dark Hawk actually works very well as a compliment for Venom. They're very much um, similar in their determination, and as we witness how much alike they are, I feel like Venom's mythos as an anti-hero is solidified and strengthened. The three-part storyline First Kill spans three different Spider-Man hero killer annuals, and in it Michelini chronicles the days following Eddie's transformation. He is testing out his new strength when he hears his neighbor being attacked by goons who want to steal his invention. He's too late to stop his neighbor's murder, but he promises to rescue his neighbor's nephew Pablo from the evil corporate overlord who, you know, was behind the assault. During the rescue mission, Venom discovers he's vulnerable to fire and forges a deeper bond with his alien counterpart by declaring he won't abandon it. And I think that's neat. I want a symbiote. Seems like a good friend. In reality, though, Pablo was the one to orchestrate the whole hooligan business in order to force his uncle's hand into selling his invention. So after Venom informs him that his uncle's dead, he realizes that there was no murderous intent in this young man's heart, and he took pity on him and let him go. Again, this is why I like Venom. The whole collection ends with Amazing 388, in which Michelini shares with us another step in Brock's tale of woe. Eddie seeks instruction from a homeless war veteran on the ways of combat, and in appreciation, he gives him some money, but the man ends up buying drugs and overdoses. The story ends with how the veteran is a victim of a system he, that he couldn't fight, just like Eddie feels like he's a victim of Spider-Man, so therefore, Spider-Man must die. Before my final geek out, here's a word from our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off. Retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Me Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for US customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. All in all, I'm pleased with the story selected in this first volume of Epic Collection on Venom. I'm 99% sure that every story in here is also included in the Venom vs. Spider-Man omnibus, but maybe some excerpts aren't in the Omni. Um, so this will be a great pickup for you if you don't own that out-of-print Omni. I want to wish you all sincere luck in obtaining a copy of this epic. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you for hitting that like button, subscribing, supporting us on Patreon Redbubble so we can grow as a channel. And as always, stay minty!